Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study. Going to be talking about NFTs today, and before we proceed any further, I would like to state that the information in this video is not a recommendation to buy or sell any securities or NFTs, and for that purpose, it is only educational purposes. So, I want to make a quick video about NFTs. Well, it may be a little bit longer than my other videos, but NFTs have been blowing up, it's been a hot market space. Um, and some of you may not even know what an NFT is. This is a non-fungible token. What does that mean? Simply put, it is a certified unique piece of digital data stored on the blockchain. This can be in the form of art, photos, audio, anything of that sort. Um, with that being said, there's a ton of buying and selling going on in this speculative marketplace. And it's very exciting because there's some great projects that are going on uh, in this space. So... I will share more details about the project that I decided to join, um, and I then made a purchase. Um, so later on in the video, I will show you that exact purchase. Um, what I wanted to do, uh, my goal here is make a quick rundown of this experience process, the path that I took to complete my first purchase. And just a heads up, there is not just one way, there are many different services, many different platforms, and different ways to go about doing this. So the first thing you're going to need is that I have Coinbase opened up here. I used Coinbase, I've been with Coinbase for many years, um, it's always been good to me, um, and decided to stick with the Coinbase platform for um, getting this process going so it's familiar with me it's comfortable you want to stick with something that you're familiar with comfortable um, that you trust the service um, and yeah that's going to be what works for you you know you got to always work with what um, you're comfortable with and what you, who you trust and so for me, I went with Coinbase. Uh, Coinbase, you're going to need an account, and you're going to have to sign up for an account. Um, you could do it on the desktop here, preferably on your mobile device would be a better way to go around. Uh, why you need a brokerage account on the cryptocurrency market is that you're going to need cryptocurrency assets. Um, you are going to need to purchase um, Ethereum. So... Once you create that Coinbase account, do your name, security verifications, all of that, it's pretty straightforward. And once you have the Coinbase account set up, you just have to have that Ethereum purchase. Um, so if you don't own any Ethereum, you will need to buy some. Make sure you link uh, your Coinbase account to your bank account so you can complete those transactions um also i would recommend that you use uh coinbase pro the pro doesn't mean that you're paying extra for their service um it's just another app that they have on there where they uh facilitate trading uh active trading that that target audience on there versus coinbase um and on coinbase pro you can actually save yourself a lot of money and fees um through the crypto purchases and sales on there so make sure you download coinbase and then second um you get your account set up and then uh, after that download coinbase pro as you may know coinbase collects a lot in fees so you want to make sure you do that last step and get coinbase pro so you can make sure you're saving a significant amount in fees because they can definitely add up over time as you're investing in crypto um, so now once you get that going, you are going to have to download the Coinbase wallet. Uh, once you have the Coinbase wallet, it will ask you for your username so that uh, other users can be able to find you on your wallet to be able to send you maybe an NFT or some crypto. Uh, maybe you want to gift somebody uh, some Ethereum. You know, those are the cool things you can do with the crypto wallet. Pretty much like a physical wallet, but a digital wallet designed to move your cryptocurrency assets in and out. You can also store digital collectibles on there, such as NFTs. So this is why you're going to need that Coinbase wallet. All the transactions that you complete in the NFT market space are with your wallet. So the currency that you're using to purchase that NFT 
goes out and then the NFT goes into your wallet. That's the simple breakdown of that process. Um, very important when you are creating that Coinbase wallet account, um, you are going to have to make a, um, well not make it, you are going to be assigned a unique address and that address is going to have a unique multiple word combination. That password, which is super important, is going to be something that you and only you should have and you should not uh, be sharing that with anybody else. You have to come up with something that works for you here and to be able to remember this, maybe write it down on a piece of paper, store it somewhere safe or in a lock, anywhere that uh, works for you, but the keyword here is safe um if you do have any other strategies or ideas feel free to suggest it i know this is something i struggle with personally um so uh, always open to ideas and suggestions on that one um once you finally do have that set up so you have the coinbase account set up you have the coinbase wallet set up it's actually two different setups um, and you know what, throw the Coinbase Pro set up in there as well because you want to make sure that you're able to link that to Coinbase and uh, save yourself a lot of money and fees when you are purchasing Ethereum. You can then get ready to go to one of the NFT marketplaces here, OpenSea.io. So this is the website. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the features on um open sea here and it is a very vast market space here um and you could see uh if you go to explore see um you have people who could create content and share it on here as well it is very uh it's very fascinating and you can see there's a lot of information here a lot of different artworks projects um and let's just uh, pick one for example here. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go to the Doge Pound here. Doji well, number 150. All right. So we're looking at the Doge Pound. We got uh, Doggy number 150. So Doggy number 150 is one of the many art pieces. It's actually a set of 10,000 different art pieces within the Doge Pound community. As you can see here, they are selling it at a listed price where you could buy it now for about uh, one Ethereum, which is at the time of this video going for about close to $3,900. You could see the price history here too. Um, so this was just uh, new, not too much history here. You could also make an offer. So those are your two options. Um, I haven't really messed around with the make an offer option. I have gone with just the buy now um, process. And the buy now process is uh, pretty easy, straightforward. Um, the only issue with that is you do have to consider the uh, gas fees, uh, Ethereum gas fees, which I will show you a pretty cool and interesting chart on that later in the video. Um, I also want to continue showing you guys other details you could find on here is when you go to the Doji 150, or what is it, One, yeah, number 150 properties, it's going to compare all the other uh, Doge Pound art pieces and tell you, hey, 4% have this uh, feature, 11% have the smile, only 3% have the stuntman helmet, as you can see. Um, the background is also uh, pretty rare, 13%, and then 50% have the doge gender, so it looks like there's a uh, majority of them have this, and there's some that have a rare uh, gender element added to it, which again, could create some value to this when comparing to the other art pieces in the Doge Pound. So this is a cool way to kind of determine um, uh, the value within the Doge Pound art pieces compared to each other. If you click down here, it'll give you a description about the project. And then down here, you have some details. And if you go all the way to the bottom, 
you have a transaction history. So minted, this means that this uh, went live on the network. And then you can see the transferring. And now that they're putting the sale up here for uh, $2. Well, actually, no, there was a sale, yeah, for 2 Ethereum and 0.69. And now they're trying to sell it for a Ethereum. So... Um, Ethereum prices do fluctuate. Uh, it does look like they are selling it for less than what they purchased it at. So, with that being said, um, that's pretty much what you have going on on this page. Like a breakdown. And then if you scroll to the bottom here, you can see more from the collection. So you can see Doji, 8451, going for about 6 Ethereum. And then you have um, this cool Doji over here with uh, glasses, the cool shirt, uh, going for two Ethereum. Again, this is such a wild market space. You see like these crazy uh, differences in prices. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just one of many different projects. If you go all the way up here to stats, right? You could see kind of the movement and the details of what's hot what's not what's trending and here you go you have the top 100 different collections uh the crypto punks that many of you have heard about on the news um even visa getting involved you have them right here it tells you the volume of ethereum uh going on with the trading you can see the 24% hour change in the valuation and the 7 day percent change uh, which has dropped quite significantly. The floor price is going to be the lowest price going for these pieces within the collection. The number of owners is how many people own these um, assets or these uh, pieces of digital data within the collection. And um, um, the assets tell you exactly how many there are within that collection. So you can see here, uh, CryptoPunks, there's about 3,100 3, owners. Uh, Board 8 Yacht Club, about 5,400. The floor price for that is going almost close to 40 Ethereum. 40 Ethereum. Um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Um, yeah, that just blew my mind right now. Um, and then you can get an idea going down this project list. Uh, you have Cool Cats NFT. Uh, this one I looked at and I saw that the floor price was four. And if you go through here, you click it, you could see all of the ones that are up for the collection. Going about 3.5A, 4.1. So yeah. A little bit out of my budget uh, for a newcomer to this space and kind of felt uh, pretty overwhelming seeing these very expensive um, pricing on these NFTs and very speculative markets. So I wanted to get involved in, um, in a space that, you know, had a low cost entry um, and that was also for a good cause. And I went down the list, and let me see if I could pull it up here. I'm gonna. So what I did is, or I can search it here actually. So I go here, you can search for any project, type in crazy koalas NFT, and here we are. I am in uh, this project. Crazy Koalas NFT, <laughs> they're a fun bunch. Um, they look pretty cool. Um, I like that there's a low cost entry and most importantly, I like that there is a community and that is seems to be the theme of what is keeping this movement going and growing for the NFT market space. The sense of community, the sense of belonging to a group of people with a common mission and objective and and um, common outreach programs to help out uh, different organizations and causes. And what the Crazy Koala NFT collection did, which I thought was really cool, is that the community has already donated about $30,000 uh, to $35,000 to uh, Hospital Koala. And Hospital Koala is an organization which helps rescue wild koalas, takes care of them, and releases them back to the wild. It's pretty cool, huh? So, um... 
I will say it was very hard to pick one. Um, it took me maybe like about a week um, and just all the research on top of that. And I really like the um, the design here. It's simple. Um, it looks so cool, you know, and just uh, it has a good... <laughs> It's got like this adorable uh, vibe to it um, and it's fun and you know that's the cool thing about all of this all wrapped into one project. Um, so the one that I got, let's see if we can pull it up here, is and you can see um, so if you don't want to bid you would go to buy now and this is exactly what I did. I went to buy now, and then you can see the ones listed here. They're going for about 0.03 ETH. So, like, for example, this one here, we have, uh, there it is, 0.03 ETH, going for about $116.85. Uh, so this is without considering um, the gas fees. And the gas fees is going to be probably one of the toughest barriers to deal with um that especially when you look at these projects that are just spawning and blowing up everywhere and when you look at projects like crazy koalas for example um they have a twitter page this is a great way to look at specific projects and learn more about them. You can see that they have a uh, following here. Um, they have a Discord group, the OpenSea link to the collection, um, a little bit more details here. You could see uh, Crazy Koala NFTs, coloring sheets, perfect Sunday afternoon. I mean, this is, uh, this is cool. I like to be a part of this. This is a nice uh, positive efforts, energy, positive vibes. And I am all about that. I love it. Uh, so that's another tip I can share with you guys is use Twitter. You can get a lot of information on these communities when you're trying to decide in this crazy, overwhelming, busy market space of so many different uh, crypto, um, so many different NFTs and NFT collections available. Uh, Twitter can definitely help you out with that direction and trying to figure that out. And is that a Minecraft? Wow. Oh, man, that is, that is so cool. Look at that. Okay, I'm getting distracted here. Back to the video. <laughs> um, so, Crazy Koalas, yeah. They And then, actually, if you go here, you can search for a specific one. And you can put, like, the number... So, oh wait, hold on. You have to go to the previous page. And you can see I'm still getting familiar with this landscape of OpenSea. Oh, I put a dollar. I meant to put three, seven, five. So, oh, and then I got to get rid of the buy now filter. Let's see. Let me do another search here. No, yeah, that's not my guy. I'm trying to see where I can find the specific NFT that I purchased here. It was 367. So let's go here. There's my guy, Crazy Claws NFT number 367. So as you can see, he has the scarf, he's got the fedora, he's chilling, and he's really tired. And um, yeah, like I, I love it. Um, and the cool thing I saw about this is that you can see the price history has gone down on this specific crazy koala. It was at one point going for 0.15 Ethereum. These are going for about now 0 0.03 to 0 0.05. I bought in at 0 0.05. I felt comfortable with that. Um, and the, of course, the gas fees in total. So I spent about, um, it was 183, like about $283 in total on this. 
And this leads me to my next point, the barrier of dealing with gas prices and fees. Um, so what exactly is this? This is the fees that fluctuate um, to... Uh, these fees are paid to the miners on the blockchain, uh, Ethereum blockchain, to help facilitate the numerous transactions that are happening on the blockchain now, especially with increased demand and surge in the NFT marketplace. So what happens is that, and I'm not going to go into all this detail because it gets pretty complicated, but as you can see in August, um, which was a very hot NFT uh, month, and they set records, you can see how there's surges, these big peaks in the chart. And that is going to indicate that there is heavy workload happening on the blockchain at those periods of time. And that is going to be contributing to very expensive uh, gas price fees to help complete those transactions of sending the cryptocurrency to the NFT and then the NFT is going to be coming in into your wallet uh, via the Ethereum blockchain network. There, you have to think about it. There are so many of these processes and transactions that are happening at the same time. So this pretty much gives you an idea, kind of like volume when you're trading stocks in the stock market. When you see these volume bursts happen, um, it's the same kind of concept and idea. You're having a lot of transactions happening at that moment and at that time. And then that increases the gas price activity that you see here, which results in paying anywhere from a low of $50, $60 in fees to, yes, sometimes I've even heard $500, $600. I know when I was looking at these NFTs and I got a little bit like, um, just discouraged from pursuing uh, owning my first NFT because I saw gas prices going for like $300, $400 and I felt like that was just a little bit too much for my first NFT experience. So I, I was patient, I was waiting, I was also trying to decide which NFT I wanted to purchase from that collection. Um, and then eventually I waited and you could see it cools down. So if you aren't happy with that very high um, fee, you could be patient, wait, it cools down. Most of the time it cools down, but you do get these peaks. You don't want to get caught in one of these peaks. Um, maybe bookmark this website so you can get a better idea. Because look, right now, for example, so making this video, it was cool, cool, cool. And then all of a sudden we're getting a little bit of a overheat right here. Uh, 278 is the gas price. Um, don't know exactly the details of how that formula works. Not going to go into that detail. The point that I'm making here with this chart is that you have to be knowledgeable of knowing when these peaks are happening so that you are not shelling out so much money in uh, Ethereum gas fees. Because remember, you are going to be paying fees for the purchases of your crypto, your Ethereum on top of that. So make sure you use Coinbase Pro so you can save some money on some fees there like I said in the beginning of the video um, and yeah be very um, uh, you know aware and alert of these fluctuating gas prices because it can definitely sneak up on you just that just that same NFT that I was looking at here um, I spent about it was in the 250 270 uh, range um, and I could have ended up purchasing about 500 and um, my total could have been 570 670 dollars just to because of fees and the price didn't even fluctuate that much it was the gas fees that were being contributed to the miners on the ethereum blockchain network um, so guys with that being said it was uh, this was a very long video I do apologize for that. There's so much information about this space. I wanted to break it down um, and give you guys my experience, some tips, um, and I hope this information helped out. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more. You can visit me at thetradestudy.com. Ask me any questions you may have, and I will see you in the next one.